Alton Towers is arguably the best theme park in the United Kingdom, and I had heard so much about this place before I had the opportunity to visit, and so I was very excited when I knew that I was going to be coming here, and so right out of the bat for my first time I said I want to do two days here. I really want to spend some time to enjoy this park, see all they have to offer, and I have no regrets. Guys, Alton Towers is freaking awesome. This is going to be my full in-depth review. I'm going to talk about all you need to know if you're planning a trip here. Things that I liked, things that I didn't like. I will not be going too in-depth with any of the roller coasters because I will have separate reviews for them. I already have several out already from this park. But let's get into it. Alton Towers, everyone. So, first I want to talk about is the location of this place. It is in the middle of nowhere. And when I say nowhere, I mean it is not near a major city. In order to get to Alton Towers, you almost have to go through back roads and through a small village to get to the park entrance. There's no way around it. You're going through this small town, winding around these roads, and you're like, I guess there's a theme park around here somewhere. And because they can't build any of their rides above the tree line, you cannot see anything until you're already there. It is so crazy. And a lot of it just goes back to the history of this place, how it got to be what it is today. But because it's in the middle of nowhere, they have so much land. So much so that I was incredibly surprised when I walked in here that I was through the front entrance and I still couldn't see any rides. To get from one side of the park to the other by walking will take you a minimum of 15 minutes. That's crazy. And what's even crazier than that is you probably won't pass any other rides to get there. In the middle of this park is the gardens. It is this massive area that goes way the heck down there. Everything is terraced. There aren't any rides anywhere close to that. They aren't even allowed to build down there. And that's what I mean when I'm talking about the history of this place. Because that centerpiece, the towers that Alton Towers is named after, that's a real life castle. They aren't allowed to touch that. And so as a result, none of the rides are anywhere near that. The only exception is Hex, which makes you think you're in the castle, but they're smart. They had the entrance be at the castle, but the actual ride is in a separate building. Very clever on their part. But going back to the gardens, they do have a sky ride so that you can avoid that. However, when we went, the sky ride was down, which meant going from, let's say, X Sector to Forbidden Valley. It's going to be a pretty big walk. So if you visit here, there's a good chance you'll see the gardens, but it's a whole nother thing to actually go down into them. I did not even touch that because I knew if I went down there, I would probably get lost and I wouldn't be able to find my way back. But anyways, I'm getting ahead of myself. So after you've parked your car, you're going to board a monorail. It is impossible to walk from the parking lot to the front entrance. You have to take this monorail. And that right there, to me, is what really makes this feel like a resort because they kind of make it feel exclusive. It's so far away that you can't even get there by walking. You know, it makes it feel remote. So you get on this monorail and it takes you through the park. You're passing over Nemesis, you see Galactica, and then you get to your front entrance, Tower Street. That's that iconic entrance where you have the old double corkscrew right in front of it. So cool. Honestly, one of my favorite park entrances. Before I get in depth into some of the areas, let's talk about park hours. This park drove me crazy with the hours they operated. Holy crap, why do they close at four o'clock most days? That is insane. Probably the earliest closing I've ever seen with a major theme park. If the park is busy, they will extend it to five o'clock, but still, I'm like, holy cow. It makes it so hard to spend a lot of time here because you know your hours are limited. And with a place so big, you really have to go, go, go to get stuff done. That's why we planned two days because we saw how short the hours of operation were and said, if we want to be able to do anything, we're going to need two days. But then you encounter the other problem, which is staggered openings. You have some rides that open for early entry, you have, like Wicker Man. So let's say that opens at 9.30. Other rides are not going to open until 11. So from 11 until 4 o'clock, that means you have five hours to ride certain attractions. It's a very narrow window of time. It really just means that when you go to Alton Towers, especially for the first time, you have to have a game plan. You have to know what to do, especially because you're not going to go do Nemesis and then say, hey, let's go ride, let's say, Oblivion. They're so far away from each other that that logically would make no sense. When you come to Alton Towers, 
you have to know what you're gonna do. So we hit Wicker Man first thing, and then headed over to X Sector to hit Oblivion. By then, Smiler already had a pretty long wait, and so we said, okay, we'll do that right before the park closes. So then we went over, did Rita, 13, and then made our way over to Forbidden Valley. And when I talk about that, obviously my main focus is the roller coasters. If you are looking to do a lot of the other attractions, then you'll have to work that in too. Like they have Duel, which is the shooting dark ride. It actually used to be a regular dark ride, but then they converted it. And so it's got this castle theme and it's okay. I'd say it's worth doing at some point. I mentioned Hex earlier. That's a Vacoma Madhouse and probably the best of its kind. Really cool with this iconic story. There's a few others, like you have the Blade, which is your Viking ship, but I felt like that was something that the park could improve on, especially when Thorpe Park has so many thrilling flat rides. So I want to discuss the theme of it. You've heard me mention some of the specific areas, and I will say some areas are done better than others. A lot of these are just a general theme, so don't go in expecting a theme like what you might get at a place like Europa Park or even Port of Ventura or Fantasia Land. X Sector does not have a ton of theming. I would say the rides are more themed than the area, which is completely opposite from some other parks. They might go with focusing on theming the area, but not as much the coaster specifically. So don't go in expecting a lot of theming in some of these designated areas. Like Mutiny Bay, you'll see some pirate flags here and there. You do have Sabibi's Land, which is their kids area, and that's actually pretty well done. It would be nice if this park had another kids area. Instead, you just have this one concentrated section where all of your kids rides are just right there. So I can imagine if you're a family with kids of multiple ages, you might be split up throughout the day simply because if you have a kid who's just wanting to stay in Sabibi's land the whole time and then your teenagers are wanting to go off and do roller coasters, they might not even step foot into Sabibi's land. Of course, I didn't have that issue, but I can imagine how other people might. Going back to the theming though, I think some roller coasters are definitely done better than others. Rides like Spinball Wizard aren't themed at all. Wicker Man and Nemesis obviously are really well themed. And then you have a ride like Rita that has pretty much nothing. So it is not very consistent like some other parks where it's either all or nothing when it comes to theming. So I think it kind of goes back to consistency. The park is kind of spotty with certain areas that they focus their attention onto. I don't think it's personally that big of a deal for me. It didn't really bother me. But you can see how certain areas are getting more attention than others. One of my favorite things I got to do while I was at Alton Towers is eat at the roller coaster restaurant. That is located right next to Galactica. And this is great if you've eaten at Food Loop at Europa Park. This is basically the same thing. I absolutely loved this. It's a great social place to go to with some friends. The food is delicious. And one thing I liked about it is that it's actually open after the park closes. So if it's a five o'clock close, you can say, hey, let's go eat at the roller coaster restaurant right now. So that almost makes it a bit easier to plan for your day because then you can say, let's go get dinner afterwards. As for the food in some other areas, I thought some places were done better than others. There was not a huge variety. I would say the biggest variety of food options that I saw was at the roller coaster restaurant restaurant but if you're looking for your classic park food this park definitely has it so to just wrap up this review if you're going to Alton Towers for the first time don't be surprised if you get lost the park is humongous there's so many hidden paths I couldn't even find runaway mine train the first day I was at the park and again I have to reiterate this if you're going for the first time two days is probably the way to go both days I was there it was pretty busy Maybe if you don't go in a peak season time, you could get away with just one day. But if you have to wait in some lines, yeah, you'll want a second day. The other thing that I, this is just one of my regrets. I wish that I stayed on site at the Alton Towers Hotel. I feel like that really would have made the experience even better. Again, it just would have added to that whole resort feel that Alton Towers has. Alton Towers is probably one of the most unique parks in the world, period. It has the history, it has the charm, it is beautiful, and it has spectacular roller coasters. The park just gets so creative because they know they can't build super tall, so they build underground or they come up with layouts that don't require something so tall. I can't wait for the day that I get to go back here. This was one of those parks that I visited in Europe that I was like, man, I don't want to leave. This place is awesome. So I would definitely recommend this park, probably more than a lot of the parks I went to in Europe. This was definitely one of my favorites. In some ways, I liked this place more than Europa Park. Definitely not for the theming. 
Although it is cool that Alton Towers has a lot of those dark themes. So if you're a fan of roller coasters and theme parks, definitely plan on visiting Alton Towers someday. It is not perfect, but they are not so big and distracting to me that it ruined the rest of the experience. There are way more positives about this place than negatives. But I want to hear from you guys. If you've been Alton Towers, what you think of it, if you agree with my thoughts, let me know all that down in the comments below. And of course, stay tuned for more park reviews. I've still got more coming here at Coaster Studios. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.